In our Python videos, we begin and end each video with a clip of our host introducing and summarizing the topics that are learned. To do this, we have to take our raw footage, key it, and color correct it, and then put it on a background to get the desired look. Today, what I would like to do is show you how we key the footage. So let me pause this and exit full screen mode, and let's come over to the Edit tab. I open our media pool and then close it. Here is the sample clip that I would like to key. So you can see we filmed this as a green screen footage. So she's in front of a green wall. And let's come over to the Fusion tab to begin our key and work. To key this footage, we need to use a keyer node. And two of the more popular ones are the Ultra Keyer, which I'll put up here, and then the Delta Keyer which I'll put down here. Now, what I'm going to do is take our raw footage and I'm going to pipe it into both the ultra keyer and the delta keyer. And let's get rid of the output. I will display the results of the ultra keyer in the left viewer and the delta keyer will appear in the right viewer. Right now, if we play, they're both the same. Let's begin work and I'll show you uh, how different these two can be. With the ultra keyer, the first thing you want to do is select the background color. And one tip I've learned uh, over the years is you want to pick a color close to the subject because ideally you would like the key to be really clean around the border of the subject because if there's any problems a little further away, you can always kind of snip those out. So I'm going to take the eyedropper and come and select a pixel nearby. I'm going to take this color of green copy it, and then I'm going to paste the exact same color of green into the delta keyer. Now, when you're looking at this mode, I should say when you're looking in the color mode in the display while keying, it can be a little challenging to see how good or bad the key currently is. So what you want to do is you want to come up to this uh, little Venn diagram, the color RGB overlapping color wheels. And if you press that, that will show you a view of this footage where it's the alpha channel. So white is, pure white is opaque, pure black is transparent. And if there's different shades of gray, that's a sign it's not perfectly transparent or opaque, it's somewhere in between. Now, the delta keyer is a keyer that assumes you have what we call a clean plate. So let me explain what that is. If you come to the media page, I'm gonna open this clip here. A clean plate is just the background without anyone in front of it. So the way we filmed this was the host stood aside and we hit record on our camera for just a few seconds. That's it. You only really need one frame, but we hit record for a few seconds and there we go. We now have a copy of what it looks like when no one is on screen and to compare that with when someone is on screen. Now, if you come back to the Fusion page, the Delta Keyer has five inputs. If you mouse over each input, it'll let you know what that is for. This is for the garbage mat. The white one is for the solid mat. The pink is for the clean plate. And the blue is for the effect mask. The clean plate is what we want to pipe into the Delta Keyer. The Ultra Keyer does not have anything for a clean plate. That's not what it's for. So to do this, I'm going to come up to the media pool take the clean plate and drag it down here. And let's hide the media pool now. If I show the media player in the left and switch back to color, there it is. Now you'll notice if you scrub through, eventually, hmm, there it goes. This is not a very long clip. So if you scrub past, let's say maybe about 10 seconds or so, the clip ends. Whereas if you look at the clip that we're trying to key, it's much longer. So that's one thing you wanna fix, is you wanna make sure your clean plate, and I'm gonna rename this, rather than media N1 and media N2, let's rename this as footage, and let's rename media N2 as clean plate. There we go. Now, when you select the clean plate, if you come up, there's a global in and out. All you need to do is stretch this, and that way, this will be available the entire duration of this composition. 
Now let's come back and look at the ultra keyer in the left and the delta keyer in the right and make sure both of them have the alpha mode selected. Let's take the clean plate and we're going to pipe it into the clean plate input. So just take the output, pipe it in. There you go. And if you look at what happened, let me show you the before and after. If we turn the clean plate off and you're looking at the delta keyer output in the upper right, you can see it has the same problem as the ultra keyer, whereas in the four corners, it's not perfectly black, but if we turn the clean plate on, it is perfectly black, pretty much. It's not perfect, perfect, but it's for all intents and purposes, it's black. So here is one way to see the first big difference between the ultra key and the delta key. By using a clean plate with the delta key, you are not confronted with as big a challenge with the ununiform background. So to better appreciate the challenge that we're faced with with the non-uniform background, let's come to the edit page. And here we have the footage we're trying to key. And right now you can see it's black. And the reason for that is we haven't hooked it up into the output yet. But what I'm gonna do is for demo purposes, I'm going to make a new timeline. And we're gonna talk about, this will be the background demo timeline. The purpose of this one is to illustrate the challenge that uh, you'll often face when you're trying to key. So here we have the raw footage. Here we also have the clean plate. I'll bring that over there. Let's hide the media now. And the next thing I'd like to do is bring in a generator. We'll use a solid color generator. And what I will do is for the generator, instead of it right now, it always defaults uh, to be black. Oops, let me get the other timeline. Come over to the fusion page where we're doing our work. I can pick either keyer and I'm gonna copy this shade of green. Now, if we come back to the edit page, switch to the background demo, select this solid color and change it to the same shade of green that we're using in the Fusion page, we'll be able to see a nice demonstration of what's, what's happening here and what is the challenge. Come over to the color page. Here is the raw footage. And if we come over here, here is the background. Let's focus on the background with the clean plate. If you look at the scopes, it may not be visible. Make sure you click on the scopes button. And here you go. This shows you from left to right on the screen the combined amount of each color that is present in each column. Because this is a green screen, almost all the color you see is green. There's very little red and blue. There is some, to be sure, but it's, it's very low. And let me see if I can uh, make this larger. So here, this is the challenge that we're facing. It's not a perfectly flat line. In an ideal world, there would be no red, no blue, and there would be green and it would be perfectly flat and very, very thin, meaning you don't have different shades of green, slight different shades of green from either lighting or painting. And that's not what we have. And that is one of the challenges that we're facing here. So if we come over here to our edit page, let's see, are we able to color correct a solid color? We may not be able to. Actually, I, I, actually, I think we may be able to see it. So here is the clean plate and you can see the little thickness here. If you come to edit and we move the playhead over the generator, come to the color, you can see we now have a straight line. Here it is, red, green, and blue. A certain amount of red, a certain amount of green, a certain amount of blue. Perfect. It doesn't vary as you go from left to right, and it's one pixel thin, meaning it's very uniform. It's perfectly uniform across the entire screen. We don't have that. And this is what leads to the challenge that we saw with the ultra keyer. If we come back to our original timeline, pop over to the fusion page, you can see with when we're using the ultra keyer, we picked a single color of green for it to key, to turn transparent. And it did a good job here, but as we saw that on the left and right sides of the of the clean plate, it kind of dipped off a little bit and it the green did. And the green dipped to just enough to where you're not getting a perfect key. This is where the Delta Keyer and the clean plate really help. By having a clean plate, which we see here, let me change it to a color, this has the slightly darker green in the corners than in the center, just like the footage does. 
So by piping this in and you're taking, it's called the delta here because in mathematics, delta, the Greek letter delta is used when you're taking the difference or subtracting one number from another. So whenever you see delta, you think difference or subtraction. It's basically subtracting one pixel from the main footage and it subtracts the, the color of the pixel from the clean plate, roughly speaking. And that gives you a pretty good key by default. On the delta key here, you can see it looks almost perfect other than for the foreground, there's a little bit of non-opaque pixels. And let, let's see, can I, if you zoom in a little bit and look around, you can see it's maybe difficult to see here, but there is some speckling here. And that speckling is a sign of some non-transparent pixels showing up as well. So to fix this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the controls and we're going to go over to the mat and there should be something called threshold. Up here, you're saying things that are almost white, make them white. And at the bottom, things that are nearly black, go ahead and make them black. In other words, if it's almost opaque, make it completely opaque. And if it's almost transparent, make it completely transparent. So that's the purpose of the threshold here. So I'm gonna bring the top one down until you can see in terms of the foreground, it's now solid white. And I brought it down to 0.85, so let's just go to 0.8. Now we still see these little speckling in the background, so the difference is not perfect, and we're going to increase this to how about 0.10, and that does a pretty good job. Now, one thing you may be wondering, why is there speckling in the background? You have to keep in mind the moment a subject walks on screen, they are now bouncing light around as well. Not only is light bouncing off from the green screen onto them, but light is bouncing off of them onto the wall. And as they move, the bounced light is also gonna move. So it introduces these little imprecise shadings into the color that you're working with. And that's why, although it, you would think it would almost be perfect, it's just not quite perfect. So let's change this bottom threshold to 0.1. Let's now come to the ultra keyer come over to the mat, and we're gonna do the same thing. For the low end, we're gonna do 0.1. The high end, we're gonna do 0.8. So the 0.8 fixed the foreground, much like it did over here. The foregrounds between the two are quite similar. The backgrounds are different, and the reason the backgrounds are different is the clean plate. So in order to fix the ultra key background, we would have to be a, do a little more work, maybe be a little more aggressive with the threshold or maybe we would have to go in and do a crop so that you know we just go ahead and cut out the corners and things like that. So, but using the same settings as the Delta here, you don't get the same result. A little more work is cut out for you. Next, what I'd like to do is take and return to the color mode, but to help you see the difference, we're going to put both of these clips, these keyed clips on top of a background. So I'm gonna bring in a background node Actually, rather than a background node, if I come up to the effects and select the templates under edit generators, this is the background that we actually used in the Python video. So I'm gonna take this one, this output, and I'm going to merge it on top of that background. So here, the output of the ultra key is gonna go in and be merged with the computer background behind it. So let's now display this over here on the left. So we also want to do the same thing here, where the output of the Delta keyer, we'd like to merge that with the computer background. And let's display this on the right. Oops, uh, arrows are a little bit messed up. So I'm going to take this one here and merge it onto the Ultra key. I want it to be the background of both of them. There we go. Now we have both the Ultra key and the Delta key combined footage for us to see. I'd like to rename these rather than merge two and merge three, let's rename this one ultra key demo. And you can see the which is which by looking above each player and merge three, we'll call that Delta key demo. Notice when it automatically strips out the spaces. There we go. So these look pretty good, but if you take and zoom in a little bit more, you will see there are still some differences between them. And this comes from what we call spill. If you look on the hair here and the hair here, this still has a little bit of green in it, not so much here. And this is because, like I said, light bounces off the wall onto your subject. So it 
it does reflect off to the hair here and into the camera. And we call that spill. It's like the, the green light is spilling on your subject and you need to account for that. And both of these keyers have tools to help with spill. You click on Ultra Key, come over here, uh, not the merge, we wanna look at the keyer itself. Come over to Matte or Image, there it is. If you select on the Image tab, there's something called Spill Suppression and Spill Method. For Spill Method, there's four different settings and rare, medium, well done, burnt. Medium is what you typically would use for a green screen. So if I select that, you'll see a lot of the green disappeared, but there's still a little here. So let me go back to none. Here is none. Now watch this screen as I change it to medium and you'll see how a lot of the green disappears. I'm about to change it now. Now, if we were to go to well done, it improves even more. And if we do burnt, now you start to see it gets a little aggressive in the color compensation and now it looks like a sunburn. So we're not gonna do burnt, but we'll leave it at well done. Let's now come to the Delta keyer. We look at this and there's not really much that needs to be done. So if we come to fringe on the Delta keyer, the fringe page is where there's a spill suppression dial. If we go from none to medium, it's hard to tell the difference. So let's now zoom back out and zoom out on both of them. So there we go. This is a quick overview of comparison between Ultra Keyer and Delta Keyer. If you remember, I mean, I would actually strongly recommend that you use the Delta Keyer whenever possible. And to get that clean plate, all you have to do is between shots, have all the subjects walk off to the side so they're no longer in front of lights, they're not in front of the camera, they're not in front of the green wall or the green screen that you're working with. Just film a quick second or two of it and there you go. And you can see how by doing that with the Delta Keyer, I piped in the clean plate, adjusted the threshold, and lo and behold, we already have a really nice looking effect. But with the Ultra Keyer, you have a little more work cut out for you. Here, what you have to do is you don't have a, a clean plate to pipe in. You just pick a color, but then you have to be a little more aggressive with the spill suppression and more aggressive with the thresholding that you do so that when you're wanting to get rid of the background, you're able to do so. And you might end up having to do something like crop out the corners or other parts of your key or other parts of the background which are non-uniform in order, order to get the same result you would get with a Delta key with a single click of a button. So I hope you find this helpful. That's all for now, and I will see you in the future.